Welcome to the project everyone. Today we have more shop upgrades, which I'm really excited about. And I'm glad you're here, hope you're doing all right. We have uh, basically two major tasks. And if you've been watching the videos recently, we've uh, gotten some equipment upgrades. So the shop has kind of been changing more and more as we, you know, do more and more projects. So the two main projects today is air and uh, cooler air. <laughs> So the shop does not have any sort of HVAC. The closest thing it has is this wood furnace over here. And that's great, but in the summer and like with a really hot summer we've had this year, it's been um, less than ideal in here. Honestly, it's been hard to film. So I figured it'd be worth it to try at least putting in a little bit of AC. I know it won't be efficient, but if it helped took the edge off, then at least it would keep me in here filming and being able to put out content. So we have here the GE 10,000 BTU. Uh, it's just in the window. We might have to get a little crafty with putting this in, but we'll get to that. And 10,000 BTU, I don't know, might be a little small for this. It's just brick. There's no insulation or anything. So the brick might be a bit of an issue, but we'll get into that. And the other thing is while we're doing this, while we're, uh, cause I need to like run might be a little ghetto, so don't get too mad at me, but we're probably gonna have to run extension cords through the roof and just see if that works out. If it does, then I can, you know, work on getting uh, dedicated wiring to it. But we just need to see if it works out right now, so we wanna be careful there. But the other project is getting air to where we want it. So if you didn't know, if you haven't noticed, here's my workbench. So these are the workbenches that I built long ago before I even started this YouTube stuff. And right here, this has been my main air. Uh, just on the other side of this is some shelving and that's where I had my air compressor before. And I did move my air compressor just inside there. So, but the thing is, is I don't want this to be my only source of air. I actually wanna split it into three lines. Um, so the other line that I wanna run, and th again, we've, we've been working on the shop for a bit now. So, Originally, I got a little desktop bandsaw uh, and I had it right there, but every time I'd use it, the whole bench would get dirty. So I went on the used market and we actually got this thing right here. So we got a little workbench and I decided to start making this like my dirty workbench. So I do need to get power over here to run the different things and it would be great to have some air if we need to blow off stuff. So gonna try to also run some air through the roof and just have it hang down here. We will see how it goes. And here's the AC unit. First, let's talk about the AC because if we can get the AC installed and running, then maybe we can uh, work in the cool a bit better when we start doing the air. So uh, a lot of AC units, to be fair, to be honest, this is my first one that I own and this one is used. And if you don't know how AC units, it's a lot like the fridge. If you looked at the fridge, we have a hot side and we have a cold side. So the hot side needs to expend heat and the cold side wants to expend cooler air. And so for here, we have this huge intake here, it fans behind it, and then throw an air out here. So that's where you can pop this off. We can see this all in here and uh, kind of want to come vacuum this out since it's not mine. And then the hot side's on the back. So let's get this out of the way so we don't damage anything. So you can see here we have a bunch of fins or a bunch of slots in the metal to let air come in. And then I think it's gonna blow it out the back here. It might be sucking in here and then blowing it out the sides, but we'll see. So this is the back radiator. And you see how some of these sections have uh, the fins folded over in it. Uh, this is like ultimately, I know it probably won't affect it that much, but you do want to keep these fins as straight as possible. So be really careful not to hit 
these fins at all, and these have really fine fins. I, I have heard of a trick though, or seen a trick that could work for this. Let me, let me grab some stuff and we can try it out. So what you do is you grab a straight bristled brush and hopefully the bristles can fit in. And what it'll do is make it so that like when the bristles fit in, then when it gets to the, the problem sections, it'll straighten them out like that. So see, that's all a bit straighter, but you need to be careful that you're not damaging more by doing this, but this can help repair little sections a bit. So I'm gonna go through this and just see how much I can fix these. So that looks quite a bit better. Let me bring you in for like a close shot on that. So yeah, so I was able to straighten out a few of these different sections. I mean, it's never gonna be perfect, but that's why it's just important to, you know, not hit this and not bend any of those fins. Cause the better airflow through this radiator, the better that it's gonna work uh, in general. Okay, so we got that straightened out and I think it's time to vacuum out the front and clean those filters just so it's uh, nice and ready for a new home because I don't want to breathe the junk from other people's houses. <laughs> Let me just point out really quick that this is the other radiator. So again, the back side is a lot easier to touch. This front side, we also need to be really careful not to uh, bend any of the fins in here because that's just going to affect how well it works. And whoever had it before, you can tell there's a, a bit of gunk <laughs> stuck up on the bottom here. So that's lovely. Let's see if we can get it off without really having to touch it too much. I do have this, but I'm worried about this kind of bending some of the fins. So let's get at it. So I will say the guy that sold it to me said that it was it was brand new. They really only plugged it on to test it out. And I can tell you right now, just from everything we've seen, that's a flat out lie. I don't know, he was selling it for someone else. So maybe he was told wrong information, but this AC unit definitely has been ran for a bit. You can see all the dust that was built up in there and whatever environment it was in was, was pretty dusty or, or it was ran for a really, really long time. Either one is uh, definitely not brand new, only turned on to test it out kind of dust, I can tell you that much, but whatever. We still got a pretty good deal on it, so I'll take it. And also, just so you know, this filter here on the front, it's it's not like filtering out viruses or anything. This is just literally so it doesn't suck in debris into the radiator, essentially. And maybe I am missing like a, a bigger filter or something, but I don't really care, it's in the garage. Okay. Let's see, so now we need to go look at the window unit and try to figure out how this is going to sit in there without falling out. All right, so oh, if I can get past you guys there. This is the window that I'm thinking of using. Oh, oh. because uh, we probably want to use this just because the bug net, the whatever it's called, the bug net is like pretty destroyed in here. And it's far away from the bench, which means I can have it running without 
really bothering videos that much. And uh, yeah, this should be it. Plus we should get plenty of shade from the trees and whatnot. We're gonna see if this pops out. There is like so much grime. It hasn't been popped out in ages. Ugh. All right, there we go. So that's it popped out. I did measure this. Uh, maybe we're gonna come, we'll come vacuum this up and go from there. Okay, that is cleaned-ish, <laughs> at least enough. Now the question becomes, I don't wanna let it fall and I kinda wish I had some way, I guess I could just ratchet strap from this down. Yeah, that sounds like the easiest. You didn't realize I have my projector screen for the sim rig stuff right there. So let me get a ratchet strap. Okay, so now we have something to hold the backside from going too far back. Okay, so now that we have our strap up here, uh, we do need to measure one thing, and that is this distance. So if we want right there, it's almost 0.6 inches, and we will lock this. So from my understanding, when I look at this down here, you see how there's this? I feel like that should be going in the trough. Granted, I haven't read the rules at all, but uh, yeah, that's definitely not sitting in the trough. Oh, but I do only see two feet. Okay, we might need to figure out how this is gonna sit in here then, because my trough be way too thin. So, we need to figure that out. So the window panes that I have in the garage are single paned, uh, which is not good for insulation, but you know, it's what we have. So these tabs here on the bottom are definitely a problem. They should fit in there. And after reviewing my options of uh, constructive, persuasive, or destructive, um, destructive definitely felt like the right path. <laughs> now let's alter this thing forever. Now that I call it my own. And uh, hopefully not kill ourselves in the process. Yeah, I already need more space. Yeah, that's safe. Yeah, perfect. See, instruction works wonders. It also teaches it who's boss. All right, well, uh, time to make a fool of myself trying to install this by my lonesome. So let's see how this works out. gonna hold it, right? Better. Now we just need to figure out how to support the dang thing from the outside. Fun. All right, well, before I start doing stuff on the outside and after this would have been a lot easier to do, there's this bar that goes on the top and uh, I'm gonna put it on. So after reviewing all my options for how I wanna relieve the stress 
you know, or the weight off the back side. I'm gonna put in a bracket up here and bailing wire. So a lot like the uh, projector screen. All right, well, that should be good enough for us for now, at least. Moment of truth. There we go. Okay, should be holding itself. Now we can uh, work on the piece of wood. So obviously we still have the whole window above it open and I did put on this little bracket here. So now what we need to do is we're gonna cut a piece of wood that'll go from this bracket slot in to the window here, go up to the top and then come down there. And that should all, the bracket should also hold that a little better. And we should be pretty decent. I guess I need to treat the wood a little bit so the outside doesn't get pummeled by the rain too bad, but yeah, let's cut out a piece of wood and let's measure it. I might need to get you guys out of the way. Yeah, this is the only place I have to walk. All right, outside gray to match the brick, inside white to match the inside. Let's see how well I measured. All right, well, it's getting late and I need to go inside for the night, so I really need to close up the hole. So last thing you saw was me struggling to get that in. I did put foam kind of to really close that panel up in there, and then I put my curtains back up, so we shouldn't really have any airflow around it. I only had to use a tiny bit of tape to close it up, but uh, it should be looking pretty good. And I'm gonna plug it in and at least see how it is tonight and make sure it kind of kicks on. All right. So that is kicking a lot of air. So usually these take a few minutes to actually kick on. It's in low fan, energy saver. I mean, the air feels a little cold. But that's just because it's blowing air. It's about 85 in here. So that's a little off, but Ooh, is that the pump kicking on maybe. Yeah, so now I can feel cold air coming out. Oh, that feels so nice. Okay, that's it for tonight. All right, we got Cora ready to come in. And let's see. It is 93 in here. And let's see how this does. We'll let it run for a while. That says 93, let's see what it says. 87? I trust that more. OK, 
Okay, so while the AC is running and hopefully cooling down the shop, let's start working on the compressed air lines. So I do have two 100 footers that would be kind of nice to run and they should be long enough for going up and through the roof. But one of them doesn't really have the best ends on it and the other one might have working ends, but it's all seized up. So let's, I did get some parts from the good old Harbor Freight. Uh, let's see if we can't like free up that right now. Figured uh, this might be a bit more helpful than just an adjustable wrench. So. All right, well, I made a mistake. I do need to get these ends off. They're pretty pitted. Um, I didn't actually get parts to fix this, but at least we have parts to go on the uh, compressor. So let's do that. And I might have another hose that I can use for uh, kind of what we want to do. Awesome. So we do need to pull this part out right here. So we have the old female part. So essentially we just need to break it into three now. And I want to hard line it in. So I think one of these is going to be the ticket. But maybe both of these. Yeah, that's too small. And that is the right size, but that's, that's now too big. Yeah, gosh darn it. I can't. I don't have any of the pieces I need. Okay, so uh, went to the store. <laughs> Had to get a few more things. This is gonna be the small size, and then we need to use one of these reducers as an uppers and larger. <laughs> uh, and then we should be able to have all the pieces we need. I did find a water filter-ish. So at least it's a little bit better after we spend all that time. Of course, the sight glass is the wrong direction for what we need, but you know, whatever. I guess we'll see how long it lasts. So this is where it's gonna be like this. And then this is gonna be like that. So then it'll go tank, regulator, filter, and then into our three. So uh, let's get these all taped up and put together. All right, trying to get you guys some light down in here. So I did have to take off like the bottom canister, but that did also make me realize that I could clock the bottom canister to face out, which is awesome. So maybe something like this. Pretty easy access to on off. Let's see if uh, I guess we'll have a pump up now. All right, so it kicked off. Okay, it looks like I don't have any leaks in any of my new stuff and we have air. There we go. All right, finally have a little bit of a filter on there and we have three air chucks. So now we just need to fix the other line, run some other lines and then we'll have an extra one here or, you know, going out the door and outside if I ever need to use. I like that. I think that's turning out well. So I came in this morning and uh, I, so the yesterday I turned on the air compressor and it was at 150 PSI. No leaks, I could tell. When I came back in today, it was like 120. So overnight it had like bled off 20 PSI. So I grabbed some water, I sprayed down the different joints and sure enough, none of the joints we did, but right here, um, this coupler into the regulator, uh, it's leaking right there. So let's try and spin this whole thing off. Yeah, barely clears. And then let's put some tape on that and then put it back on. Okay, so I do have these two hoses. I think they're like 100 feet or so, uh, but 
they're just honestly kind of in the way right now. So if I could use one of these to bridge the gap through the roof to the other side, that'd be great. This one seems like a strong contender. So let's pull off this side and uh, put some new fittings on there because these fittings are like the bigger style and these hoses are not the style of couplers that I am using is what I'm trying to say. So pull them off like that. Oh. All right, that should be pretty good. Okay, let's go test it out. I guess we'll see how many leaks this has. Well, there you go. Zero leaks. What do you know? Okay, uh, the plan is to somehow get this all the way up into that hole with no foresight. Let's see if we can figure this out, hey? We got a pole, but I don't think I'm gonna be able to balance this on the pole. Ah, that's what I thought. Hey, that actually kind of worked. It should be enough to hold it, right? Hey, I actually need your help. I'm trying to get this cable out a hole. Tell me if you see it. It's over here. In the roof, yeah. Yeah, just hang on a second. Okay. Is it falling anymore? You can reach it? Okay, here, pull a little bit. Okay, uh, right there. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we have the lines up there and then we just need to drill a hole for it to come down. So if I can make some space here and get up high enough. Then I can drill a hole. Ugh. Holy crap, it is so hot up there. Uh, and just absolutely filthy. But uh, hey, we got the cables down. Heck yeah, so let's put stuff back. So, I will say, 
I think we're gonna have to call this one done. So finally got power and uh, compressed air over here and we got power and we put in the AC unit. All those are really good. I will say just a disclaimer, maybe don't follow what I do. <laughs> Cause I mean, you gotta be really careful about like extension cords and how much power you're pulling from it and the temperatures in the different areas. And so not saying you should follow me, but hey, we got it done. <laughs> And I'm really excited to have this. I need to figure out a better way to kind of store that. But I think for now, this is awesome. Now we can actually have power over here without running extension cords all over our feet and tripping all over the place. And we'll have air over here too. So that way we can blow off again. Cause again, this is like our dirty spot, but I am uh, thoroughly dirty as you can see. Uh, I need to go take a shower. So. That'll be it for this project. So glad you guys could come on this uh, adventure with us. And I hope you guys hit the subscribe button so you come next time. And uh, have a great day. Uh, oh yeah, AC by the way, it, it's kind of keeping up. It's, it's not great. You might, we might have to run it all night. I don't know, it's better, it's better. At least I can get in front of it and cool down a little bit. We'll see, uh, maybe give you an update later, but that'll do it for now. And uh, you guys are awesome and we'll see you next time. Bye.